Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs and today is New Year's Eve. It is the late afternoon here in New Zealand. The temperature is steadily climbing. We are going into high summer um, and Poodle Pa and I have a bubbly in the fridge and not many hours from now we'll be toasting in the new year 2020. So I thought it would be nice to do a video where I look back a little bit and look forward a little bit, um, sort of to round off the year really. Um, I recently um, decided to get another Idea Factory uh, limited edition. As you will know by now, I have many of them, probably most of them, and I'm on the whole a fan of their work. And there's one game uh, that I've had for many years digitally, but I've never had a physical copy. So I thought it was time before stocks completely vanish um, to, to get one in. Um, and this is the box and I'll be opening it now while talking about a bit about the game. There we are. Poodle Paws focused in on the artwork, which is nice to give you a first impression. Uh, so I'll um, I'll wrangle with the um, cellophane, and you may be wondering. I hope you're wondering uh, why I'm talking about a game that is now five years old. Um, Omega Quintet came out in 2015, so it's nearly five years. Um, it was the first RPG that Idea Factory produced for and published on the newish PlayStation 4. I find the Japanese developers are usually a bit slower to embrace a new console. It takes them a bit longer to shift production from the old to the new, uh, especially um, smaller studios that obviously don't have quite the resources. Um, so I think they brought Omega Quintet with quite a lot of hope to the PS4. And with hindsight, we have to say that those hopes probably were not fulfilled. And I will go a bit into the reasons why. Uh, if you look it up on Metacritic, you will see it has a fairly low rating overall and actually not that many reviews. I don't, not many outlets really bothered even reviewing it. But let's have a look inside first. And we see straight up some rather cute character pins. Um, these are the five girls that make up the quintet, obviously. Uh, as you can see, it is a music-themed RPG. If you don't know anything about the game, um, it is really all about a pop idol group and that will immediately spark aha with many of you because idol groups are of course huge in Japan but n not really something that we have in the West, not like this. So the story revolves around these five girls or young women who um, together with the one lonely male um, former group he's sort of the manager and they have to face grave danger now I can't remember whether I know all the girls names this one the purple one is Aria I know that because she's one of my favorites she's a bit sort of a gothic lolita uh, they're all rather cast in anime um, stereotypes um, as you would expect uh, this one is Kyoka, she's sort of half tsundere. Um, this is 
I'm not quite sure, something like Kadaneko. Um, she's the, the sporty, boyish type. And the others are, one is Nene, I think this is Nene, probably. Um, she's the shy, quiet type. And the other one is Otoha, who's a bit the sort of bratty, spoiled type. Um, so you got a pretty good rundown there of um, anime um, stereotypes. The girls are all, uh, the characters are well delineated, um, uh, so you get a clear idea of their um, uh, different personalities, and uh, they've done that quite well, I think. Um, let's have a further look. So this is obviously the game. I'll just take it out a bit. Uh, now, the game is set in a very, um, in a world that has turned dark because of a dangerous alien force that manifests as a huge number of monsters. And believe it or not, the only way uh, these monsters, this phenomenon known as Blair, um, can be combated is by a group of specially talented, gifted girls uh, and their music, and they can beat these monsters. Uh, so obviously they're sent out on missions to do precisely that, and that's really what the game is all about. Um, yes, it's a, it's a nice cover. Um, I looked up the the artist today um the, the artist is called Fukahiri and I found a great number of his artworks online I'm not sure whether he's done any other video game apart from Omega Quintet if any of you happen to know anything about that, uh, I would really like to hear about it. I couldn't find anything else. Um, he's clearly a very gifted artist. He's done some beautiful work from what I've seen today. And looking at the artwork in the game, I'm wondering whether they told him to be a bit too restrained, too careful, uh, too simplistic in a way. Maybe they didn't give him enough room for his own creativity to shine through. Um, the artwork's obviously very competent, but I think there's something just a little bit missing. Um, as is common with practically all Idea Factory games, the backgrounds in the game are not very good. That's a complaint I think you'll hear about every Idea Factory game every time one comes out. They just don't put a lot of resources into um, background graphics, uh, which is a shame. I can understand they probably don't have the money, uh, but it would really be time to do something about that. So I think people had higher expectations when a game came out on the PS4 from Idea Factory and there was a bit of a, a sigh of disappointment, I think, that it wasn't more obviously new console, bigger, brighter, better graphics. So I'll just um, uh, try and wangle open this um, soundtrack uh, so that we can have a quick listen because music obviously features big in the game and uh, the soundtrack is pretty good. Um, I would sort of describe it as mainly a J poppy. That's what it sounds like to me anyway. So I'll just turn down the sound on my TV seasonal theme and we'll just pop in this CD which I'll just show you on the inside. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a moment. And that as well. So 
I'll just pop that in. There we are. And off if the old machine has to crank up a bit first, you know, we're rather old fashioned here. And there we are. I hope you can hear it. And that's Omega Quintet departure music. Here we are. It's it's very nice. It's very nice. Um the the one thing I did notice with it being a PS4 game is that the animations are very well done and there are a lot of flashy effects in the battle scenes um, and for those having the, um, the bigger, stronger console is obviously uh, beneficial. I, I haven't noticed any, um, any slowdowns or stutterings or anything. The game runs very well. Um, now let's have a look at the two books, Some, uh, Symphony of Art and Verse Maiden. They're both hardback. So I think one of them is like a bit like a like a diary that you can use yourself as you can see completely blank pages so um, I could scribble my notes for my videos in there couldn't I and be a bit more organized how about that and the other book Symphony of Art I assume would have artwork of the characters Yes. Kyuka, did I get it right? Yes. Otoha, yes, I think I got it right. Kyoka. Kanadeko. Um, each girl has a... Uh, they, you can equip them with any weapon you like, but each girl has a special affinity with one weapon type. Uh, Nene, the shy quiet mousy girl she loves big guns um, so she is really really good even from the back line uh, with a gun um, and can even do um, aerial um, damage area effect damage so uh, she's one of my favorites to use in battle uh, Aria as I mentioned she's got some very cool effects um, the, I need to talk a little bit about the combat system. Uh, the male protagonist, he's really quite um, uh, nondescript, I'd have to say. Nothing too exciting there. Um, <clears throat> a lot of commentators were uh, a bit disappointed with the story, uh, which is okay, I think, but it you know, it won't win any prizes, and uh, and the dialogue and the characters are again. I think they're okay, but um, it's sort of you feel like the, the potential hasn't been quite fulfilled. However, when it comes to the combat, it is absolutely outstanding. Um, it is a very deep system. Uh, you can customize the heck out of it. Uh, there is quite a learning curve, I'd have to say, and because I only occasionally play the game, every time I go back I have to remind myself and go back into the help files because it is quite intricate. Um, it is a very, very good turn-based system, I'd have to say, and that is the reason why I enjoy playing the game more than for the story or, or music or characters or anything else. It's the combat.
They really put a lot of work into that. Unfortunately, as you may know, Idea Factory are not very good at providing really insightful, helpful tutorials. They just plaster you with screen after PowerPoint screen of information, which, you know, you don't really have time to to fully grasp, nor is it very well explained. So you have to figure a lot out for yourself. Uh, that's pretty much par for the course with Idea Factory. Um, I have to mention one, one niggly problem with the game, which caused me to finally sort of abandon it midway and I really always wanted to go back and finish it but the reason why I have been reluctant is that it's something so trivial that I just don't understand why it hasn't been addressed. The walking speed in the game when you're in a dungeon or out you know outside uh, is abysmally slow. The girls sort of potter along at a very slow jog and as you get f in the beginning that doesn't matter so much because the dungeons are small and you don't notice it but once you get more into the game after a few chapters the dungeons suddenly open up and they are huge they're absolutely enormous and you you have to walk for miles what's even worse is that there are a lot of enemies and you simply cannot avoid them because of your slow speed. So you get ambushed all the time uh, and you just fight battle after battle, even if you don't feel the need for having to level up. Um, I, for the life of me, I cannot understand who thought that was a good idea. I just don't get it. I thought maybe it was just me, but I went and Googled and found that right from the beginning, loads and loads of players have complained about this. Now, it would have been easy to address, I think, with a patch or something, but they haven't done that. So I can only assume it's deliberate for what purpose escapes me, I have to say. Now, apparently, I wasn't aware of this, but I found reference to this when Googling, you get an, an extra ability in Chapter 6. I'm, I'm just starting Chapter 5, so I'm, I'm almost halfway through the game. And you only get this ability in Chapter 6, which enables you to move a lot faster, and that should really solve the problem, I reckon. Um, the whole thing is bizarre, I'd have to say, and I'm just pointing it out because for one small thing like that, for one small problem, it can really almost flatten your enthusiasm for a game and make you drop it and walk away. Uh, that strikes me as silly. However, I will go back and have another go, and with any luck I'll be able to get through to Chapter 6 and finally finish the game because it is enjoyable to play, I'd have to say that. Um, so we've unpacked everything. We're listening to the soundtrack. So I would now like to just very briefly look ahead. We've had a look back at Idea Factory and their work on the PS4 in the beginning. And as you can see, there are some downsides and some upsides, but overall it's a bit of an unbalanced package, I'd have to say. As we know, Idea Factory um, went on, they've been quite prolific, and this year, 2019 in particular, uh, they have brought us some outstanding work. Um, and I have unboxed both Dragon Star Veneer and Death End Request, the two major RPGs they published this year, and both are really good games. The background graphics are still crappy, I'm sorry, uh, but apart from that, they've really learned to balance all the different elements of a game much, much better. 
and there's almost no comparison, I'd have to say, between Omega Quintet and one of the RPGs of 2019. So that's really a very good report card, one would have to say. Looking ahead to 2020, uh, of course, I don't know what they will give us, but I'm, I'm hoping for something. Uh, and so far, the information I have is that there will be a new game in the Neptunia franchise. Now, I'm a big fan of Neptunia, as you know. This new one is called VVVTunia. Yes, I know. Um, there isn't a lot of info out yet, so I don't want to say too much. I've had a quick look at the Japanese web page, which also has some English text on it, and I was left with an impression of a bit of a mishmash, I have to say. So I'm, I'm waiting and watching, so to speak. Um, the other game that's coming, and we know a lot more about that, uh, is called Ark of the Alchemist. And that's coming out in early 2020, probably end of January. And that looks promising. Uh, it's set in a desert setting. The background graphics still don't look brilliant to me, but never mind. Um, the figures look sort of a bit more cutesy chibi than we're used to from Idea Factory. Uh, but overall looks very promising. Um, has some other element of um, civilization building, uh, so it looks and sounds interesting and good. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, so that's it so far for 2020 from Idea Factory, and I want to close this video by mentioning that I happened to have a spare copy of the game. I found it on my shelf and I thought what better opportunity than the end of the year to make this available. This is one giveaway for Omega Quintet. It is the European version, EU Region 2. If you're keen on DLC and stuff like that, then please uh, consider that because obviously that wouldn't work for North America. And trust me, there are a lot of costumes in this game and a lot of stuff you can do with accessories and uh, you can even do your own, uh, your own video of producing a music video with the girls and the music as a video editor inside the game. Uh, so you can certainly have some fun that way. Anyway, this copy I'm happy to uh, send to one lucky uh, winner. Uh, all you have to do is post a comment here under this video and uh, just tell me why you'd like to play Omega Quintet. And uh, I will pick a winner on the 4th of January. Give you a bit of time. Okay, I hope that was an exciting finale uh, to this unboxing. Thank you for watching Omega Quintet, the past and the future of Idea Factory games. Uh, I'm food for dogs. Keep well. Bye bye.